All right, so you made it, man. We are back for week number three. My name is Jim Schultz, and this is the Road to the Pros. Man, you made it. I made it. Everybody made it. We are here. You can see my hair is also, it's here in spirit. It's not exactly here the way it maybe is normally here, but, you know, it's here. It's here in spirit. So week number three is uh, is upon us, and we were able to cut down uh, 0.6 last week. So pretty slow week, really. You know, 1.4 the first week, 0.6 the second week. So two pounds down, two weeks in. And so, I mean, things are happening. Like, things are moving forward, and they're not moving forward very quickly, but they are moving forward uh, nevertheless. So moving out into this week, before I kind of get into the main focal point of the uh, the vlog here this uh, this week number three, I'm going to turn the dial up just a little bit. Like, I think it's time to go ahead and turn that dial. Let's turn that dimmer switch just a wee little bit to make things a little bit more challenging, just a little bit tighter, just a little bit more business-like. Because the first two weeks, honestly, they've been very, very easy. They almost couldn't have been easier, honestly. I mean, I'm not even tracking my macros. I'm still having plenty of snacks. I'm still eating out with my wife. Like, I'm still doing all the things I would normally do. The only thing I'm really doing is I'm reining things in just a little bit. Like, I'm obviously exercising a good bit of awareness over, you know, my, my food intake. And I'm trying to keep my steps up, trying to keep my activity levels high. And then, of course, training is, uh, is not usually a problem. So I don't really have to worry about that uh, too much, especially since I'm feeling pretty healthy for the, uh, for the most part. So what I want to do for this week is I want to turn the dial up just a little bit, right? I mean, averaging one pound a week is probably not going to be enough to get me where I want to go because, you know, I know I'm going to miss some weeks later on. I know things are going to get really hard, you know, come the dog days of summer. Like I know, you know, August, September, those are going to be, you know, much, much more challenging than they are right now. So I'd like to be more kind of in that averaging like a pound and a half a week right now, a pound and a half to maybe like one, six, one, seven, somewhere around there. So I'm going to try to put a couple of deuces on the board. Like, I really want to drop some deuces on this prep before the prep for the next couple of weeks. So I'm going to go for maybe a two-pounder this week, maybe a two-pounder next week. Like, we'll see what happens. You know, your body's going to do what your body's going to do. There's only so much you can do at a certain point. But I know that I can do a lot more than what I'm doing right now. So we're going to turn it up just a wee little bit and kind of see kind of see how it goes. But what I want to focus on here, I want to keep this one a little bit a little bit more business-like than the previous two have been. And I'll, I'll link down to week one and week two uh, down in the description. If you haven't seen those yet, check them out. If you want to follow along, I'm trying to earn my pro card in you know the natural organizations or at least one natural organization, or really any natural organization that will give me a pro card uh, this year would be great. And so this is the, uh, the, the road to the pros or my road to the pros. But I want to make all this stuff kind of tangible for you guys too. I want to talk about my weekly weight loss strategy. And I really, really, really like this strategy. I kind of developed this, uh, it was a number of years ago now, I want to say at least five or maybe six or seven years ago, when I kind of stumbled upon this weight loss strategy. And I'm sure I ripped it off from somebody else. I'm sure I borrowed it from, you know, the, you know, the, the, the pillars of the uh, evidence-based community and all the bodybuilders that have come before me. Or maybe it was some conglomeration, some amalgamation of, you know, their thoughts, my thoughts whoever's thoughts, but what I like to do is my low point for the week, I think I maybe mentioned this a little bit uh, last week, but I really want to dial this in this week and kind of elevate this to the focal point of the, uh, of the vlog. So my low point for the week, that becomes my new body weight. And so that is effectively the number that represents, like when I think about where I'm at right now, I think about the fact that my low point last week was 204.6. And so that is my body weight. And now, you know, as of this morning, I was like 205.4, so I'm obviously up a little bit. But in my mind, 204.6 is the number. It's the number from last week, and it's the number that I'm trying to beat this week. And so there's a number of advantages to going about your weekly weight loss strategy this way, in my view. So number one, here's the first thing. It's not realistic to expect to lose weight every single day. It's not realistic to expect that you're just going to go down in a straight line, you know, the whole, you know, the whole time, the whole eight weeks, 10 weeks, 12 weeks, you know, 55 weeks, whatever you've got scheduled for yourself. We kind of talked about this last week. I mean, it's going to be a lot more of a zig and a zag type of pattern, you know, on your way down. But even still, you know, day to day, week to week, it's just not realistic to expect to lose weight every single day. And so when you're only looking for a new low for the week, it takes a ton of pressure off feeling like you need to lose weight every single day. 
because I don't need to lose weight every single day. I'm really just looking for a new low point at some point in the week. So I effectively have, you know, for all intents and purposes, seven cracks at getting a new low for the week. And so that takes a ton of pressure off when it just comes to the overall psychology of thinking about, you know, thinking about your weekly weight loss strategy. And so that's the first thing that's really helpful. The second thing that's really helpful is once you hit a new low for the week, if it fits in with where you want to be in terms of like weekly averages, in terms of like staying on track or staying on schedule for what you're ultimately trying to achieve and kind of your end objective and your end goal and, you know, the look and the physique and, you know, the frame that you want ultimately, once you hit that number, whether it's a pound, a pound and a half, you know, three quarters of a pound, two pounds, whatever it is, then the pressure is off for the rest of the week. And so you don't necessarily have to get another low for the rest of the week. And so what does that do? It takes a ton of pressure off. You know, your stress levels are going to come down quite a bit, which this is going to definitely be, you know, its own focal point at some point. But stress, man, it just wreaks havoc on your hormones. It just wreaks havoc on your whole body. It can make it really, really difficult for you to, you know, lose body fat, lose weight, and kind of get in better shape if you're constantly stressed out. If you're constantly feeling a ton of stress, a ton of anxiety, a ton of pressure, then that's ultimately going to have a very negative impact on what you're trying to accomplish. So when you hit a new low for the week, you take the pressure off. Like you absolutely take the pressure off. And so that's really, really, really beneficial. It's been said before, however, for every gimme, there's a gotcha. And so those are some gimmies. Like it's really advantageous to view your weight loss this way. And I would strongly suggest that if you've never tried this strategy before, I would start doing it right away. I would start doing this thing immediately because it, it's going to have, you know, a ton of beneficial aspects to your approach to whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. However, it still has gotchas. There will still be cons. There are still going to be drawbacks. You cannot escape these things. And so what are some of the gotchas when it comes to this strategy? Well, the main gotcha is this, and I'm speaking from experience here. So I start my weeks on Saturday. I've talked about this before, but this is very common in the bodybuilding community. And so the way that I structure my week, let me let me let y'all in on like a little bit of a, well, it's not really a secret because I'm going to let y'all in on all my secrets, you know, as we kind of move through the weeks and, you know, we get closer and closer to August and then uh, October, October being the main ones that I want to do, which I don't even know if there's a Tampa Bay show in October. I may have to go to Miami. So I may have to, I may have to go to Miami, turn pro, and then hit up South Beach. Like, that's just the way it's got to happen. I've already told Autumn, I'm like, listen, I hope you're ready. You know, we got to get really tan. Well, you're going to need to get really tan because I am going to be jacked and tan. That's not going to be a problem. But we got to get the hair gel. We got to get all the fist bumps. We got to get all ready for South Beach. And I'm pumped, man. You know, Miami, October, we're doing it. And then uh, if Tampa Bay is not uh, on the schedule, then that's the way that's going to have to be. But whatever. But the way I, I set up my weeks is I start on Saturday. And then I usually like to hit my low sometime around Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And so that gives me a ton of uh, wiggle room. It gives me a ton of, you know, uh, low stress. Uh, it, it gives me a nice low stress environment to, you know, to hit my numbers, to stay on schedule, to do all these things. Now, most of the time when I set my week up that way, Saturday just generally ends up being a higher day for me. It's the day when Autumn and I usually get some takeout at night and, you know, I'm able to eat a little bit more food and I'm hanging out with my kids a lot and it's just a lot more fun. It's a lot more fun. It's a lot more enjoyable. And so, you know, sometimes, you know, I, I may start mixing in some low days on Saturday. I've actually used that with a lot of success in the past too, but I also had fewer kids and I also, you know, had all those things, had a lot less stress from a day-to-day -day family life standpoint. But anyway, right now, Saturday tends to be a higher day for me. And so when you have a higher day, your glycogen levels fill up, your body pulls in more water, you can reasonably expect the scale weight to jump higher the following morning or maybe persist for, you know, a day or two days or even three days, not usually three days, but a day or two days or whatever. So if I'm hitting, you know, if I'm going higher on Saturday, then naturally Sunday is usually out for hitting a new low. I don't even expect it. Monday's usually out for hitting a new low. I don't even expect it either. Tuesday, sometimes it will happen. If I keep things really buttoned up on Saturday, which I'm going to talk about that here in just a second. Tuesday is usually out though. Wednesday, Thursday tends to be the ideal point for me to hit the number I'm looking for for the week. To carve out a new low 
and then stay on track, stay on schedule for the numbers that I'm looking to get out of that week. And then if I can do that, let's say I hit it on Wednesday, then I've got Thursday or Friday where I can take the foot off the gas pedal a little bit, you know, not bring in a ton of extra calories, but just eat normal, not have to worry about what shows up on the scale the following day. And then I start the whole process over again on the following, you know, Saturday, which is only a couple of days away at that point. Well, the problem and the gotcha here is if you hit a new low on Wednesday, let's say, right, and you're all excited and you're all giddy, you're like, man, I did it. Like it's happening. Like this works. Like I found this random guy with a headband on the internet. And he told me to do this and it works. Like I can't believe it. Right. Well, if you do that and then you follow that up with making, you know, lunch reservations at the Great Wall Asian Buffet for three straight days, then you're going to have a really difficult time hitting a new low the next week. You're going to have a really, really difficult time kind of filtering through all that sodium, filtering through all that deliciousness, filtering through all that just just fried pieces of heaven. Like it's going to be very, very difficult for you to get that audio system in time because, you know, it's just going to be there. It's going to be like stuck to your bones. It's going to be like stuck to your skin, the sweet and sours and the fried rices and the, you know, the, the, the wontons and the dumplings and the whatevers. And so that's the biggest gotcha with this strategy. You take your foot off the gas too much and then all, you know, the, the next thing you know, you know, you're eating a ton of food and it's persisting because it's fun and you've been obviously hungry from your deficit from uh, the previous days and whatever. And so that is where you can end up chasing your tail for weeks on end because you allow your body weight to go up too high in those days where you've taken your foot off the pedal and you can't recover. You can't recover in time to get a new low the next week and then you end up in kind of this negative feedback loop. It can be really, really difficult to break. And so if you're going to use this strategy, which I think you should, I think it's incredibly effective in terms of structuring your week in a way that just makes a lot of sense, you have to still be aware of the gotcha. You have to still be aware of, you know, the potential drawback. And this is the biggest one, in my opinion. There's another one that I'll get to here in a second, but this is probably the biggest gotcha when it comes to, you know, what could be the most damaging and the most detrimental to your wanting to, you know, get on the train to Shredsville. So be aware of this. And so what is the antidote? What is the solution? Well, the solution is you've just got to keep your high days in check, right? The solution is, you know, when you have a high day, whether it be a Saturday, whether it be a Friday, Saturday combo, which is perfectly fine. I do that oftentimes myself. I do like the back-to-back -back days that are on the higher end of the spectrum. There's actually some evidence to suggest that does a really, really nice job at kind of, you know, keeping your hormones in check, kind of restoring your metabolic rate, and things like that. It was uh, a Bill Bill Campbell, I think, out of Bill Campbell's lab. He's done some research on the kind of the back-to-back -back refeed days being really uh, positive, having some positive effects for you know the longer-term sustainability of a cut and just kind of some metabolic uh, adaptations that are positive for your you know for your overall system. So I don't have a problem with that whatsoever. But you just got to be careful. You got to be really, really careful that you know three thousand calorie days don't turn into four thousand calorie days. Which that's honestly not even that big of a deal. The problem is when 3,000 calorie days turn into 6,000 calorie days. And that may sound crazy to you. That may sound wild to you. But if you've tracked macros and if you've actually like monitored the food that goes in your body, you actually know it's not that hard to eat 2,000 extra calories. It's really not. Right? Like especially when you're eating out. I mean there can easily be an extra 800 to 1,800 calories in that meal that you're not even aware of. Right. From, you know, the from the uh, the batter that the whatever is fried in, you know, whether it be the chicken, whether it be the pork, whether it be the donuts, whether it be the watermelon, like whatever they're frying up like that batter is going to be loaded with all kinds of goodness, all kinds of deliciousness, all kinds of just calorically saturated awesomeness. And so you need to be aware of that because you can easily have an extra 1200 calories in your, you know, your, your meal at night if you're not aware of it. And then you have a few tablespoons of peanut butter as everyone should before they go to bed. And there's another 600 calories right there. And so it's like really quickly, I'm not talking about an actual tablespoon. I'm talking about like you just grab the tablespoon out of the drawer and you call it a tablespoon. And that's probably more like three and a half tablespoons. And so the next thing you know, you've got 2000 extra calories. And you're like, how did I, you know, eat so much food? Why am I not losing weight? Whatever. Well, it's because your high days became, you know, mega pint days, right? Like your high days just became astronomically high days. And so that's the, that, that's the biggest issue with this. And it's something I have fallen victim to many times myself. And so I know that I'm humming on all cylinders and I know that you will hum on all, all cylinders if you keep those high days in check, 
which doesn't mean you undereat. It doesn't mean you turn a high day into a deficit day. That's not what it's intended to be. It just means that you stay within bounds, stay within the boundaries, right? Keep this thing, you know, uh, in balance and you'll be perfectly fine when it comes to adopting and implementing this, uh, this strategy. The other potential problem here is not really something I need to worry about right now. In fact, it's not something I need to worry about at all right now. It's something I'll need to worry about later on. As I get closer, as it becomes, you know, July, August, September, all those things. The reality is when you get leaner, and this is why I don't need to worry about this right now because I'm not very lean right now. In fact, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the antonym to whatever lean would be. You know, chunky, husky, you know, whatever that is. When I finally do get lean, though, like it's coming at some point. When I finally do get lean, the, the new low for the week goal may not be the best goal. Because there will be many, many weeks when I may not lose any weight or I may only lose a little bit of weight, like, you know, half a pound, a quarter pound, whatever. But I actually will look significantly better because, you know, when you get when when your frame actually gets really, really lean, only losing a tiny bit of body fat can have an astronomical difference on how you look. And at the end of the day, the thing that I need to remember being a competitive bodybuilder is there's no scale on the stage. Like, there's no scale that we all have to step onto. I mean, there is maybe to, you know, uh, you know, demarcate which weight class we're going to be in and all those things. But, you know, there's no, you know, it doesn't matter how much you weigh when you're on stage. All they care about is how you look. All they care about is, you know, your musculature. All they care about is your symmetry. All they care about is your, you know, your, your, your posing ability. All they care about is, you know, how your frame, how your body, how your physique actually, how you're able to display, you know, what you've worked for. That's all that matters at that point. And so when you get closer and closer to the end point, when I get closer and closer to that end point, I'm going to need to kind of let up on, you know, the, the new low for the week being kind of my goal. But again, I don't really need to think about this, you know, until until the very end. But it's important that we understand that even for you, when you get a little bit, you know, leaner and you start getting closer and closer to your end goal, just be aware that if you just because you don't hit a new low for the week, it doesn't mean that you're not necessarily progressing. Right? When you get to really, really lean stages and when you get to really, really lean levels uh, on your physique, new lows may, may no longer be the appropriate goal for you. I still think ultimately you need to see the scale going down if you, are, if you expect to lose body fat. That's especially true if you're early on. Like this is just the cold, hard truth. These are just the facts. If you're 30, 40, 50 pounds away from where you want to be, the scale has to go lower. It has to. If it's not, you're not getting leaner, period. Like it's so, so unlikely that you're gaining muscle and losing fat at the same time such that your body weight is actually remaining at baseline. Now, if you're a complete beginner, I guess that's possible, you know, but for most people, it's just not going to be a realistic, a realistic objective. And so I really feel like a lot of people spin their wheels and they're kind of fooling themselves and thinking, well, you know, I didn't make any progress this week on the scale. Like, yes, I'm 40 pounds away from where I want to be. I didn't make any progress on the scale, but I'm gaining muscle. I didn't make any progress on the scale, but, you know, uh, you know, I held a lot of water or whatever. I think it's all garbage, to be frank with you guys. I think that's all just kind of, you know, ways to play, you know, uh, games uh, with yourself, ways to play tricks on yourself to make you feel like you're making progress when you're actually not making progress. And so that's just my, my very, you know, unfiltered, raw opinion when it comes to that. So if you're really far away from where you want to go, you got to see that scale going lower. But I'm also not, I'm not such a stickler to the scale. I'm not such, you know, I'm not so beholden to the number on the scale that it has to govern, you know, every day of our entire cycle, especially near the end. Near the end, it's a different ballgame. And we'll talk about that. Like when I'm doing this vlog in August, September, you know, whatever, and then we'll have those discussions. But right now, it's all about just pushing that guy lower. So for y'all out there, uh, yeah, man, try the, the weekly low strategy. I like it a lot. It has served me so well the last however many years I've been using it. It's been many years at this point. And so I'm also going to be keeping track of my weekly average, which might be something that can help later on when the, the new lows aren't necessarily coming. But I noticed that my weekly averages are actually going down. And so that's going to be another metric that I keep track of because there are a lot of folks in the natural bodybuilding community that I look up to that also use weekly averages. That's also a very common uh, metric to, to, to track when it comes to your progress or lack thereof. So that's kind of what I'm thinking and that's kind of what I'm going to do. And this is what you can do. And so that's Road to the Pros week number three. I, of course, will be back next week. Hey, three weeks in a row. We haven't missed a week yet. So I don't know, man. Maybe I'll try to go wire to wire and get every single week done 
uh, this whole process and so that you guys can have a, you know, kind of full documentation if you kind of want to follow along and see how I do and pick up some tips uh, along the way. But that's it. I appreciate you guys so much. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe to the channel. That helps me out a ton. Like the video, share the video. All those things help me too. And I will see you guys next time.